Picture a place where extraordinary wishes come true and where only a small select circle of exclusive members gain access. There's no limit to what luxury could mean to different people. How far can the imagination reach if the sky is the limit? And everything, simply everything, is possible. I'm really happy that we made this tour to give you a little bit of an impression uh, uh, how the neighborhood looks like. You will definitely enjoy the property. I'm uh, pretty positive. This looks very nice. What if we take you to the summit of absolute exclusivity? We are called the most expensive uh, designer in the world. But if uh, you can afford us, I assure you we are not expensive. Accompany us on a journey to the birthplace of the most luxurious dreams and meet the people who make them a reality. At the end of the day, we build toys. Whatever they are, whatever size they are, they're toys. And the owners are really, you know, they like to play with their toys. The Circle of Gentlemen, Regal Things for Men. She's one of the largest passenger ships ever made, an Atlantic cruiser in the Titanic tradition. Welcome on board the Queen Mary II. The world is uh, smaller on the ship, you know, it's in some ways simpler. Yeah. Just a little microcosm it's like of a everything floating, else. Like a floating town. But a look behind the scenes reveals much more. Yeah, the ship is just one big power station. Uh, that would power the equivalent of a small town of about 25,000 homes. On board are more than a thousand benevolent spirits who maintain the ship's luxury ambiance. Unnoticed by the passengers, they keep the vessel running. One thing's for sure, passengers on board the Queen Mary II are having a good time. Them like lunch or, you know, just socialize, but we don't sleep with them if that's what you're doing. <laughs> An extravagant journey along the same route that the settlers of the New World took, meeting new friends along the way. Days filled with moments that will never be forgotten. Since her maiden voyage in 2003, this queen of the seas has circled the globe hundreds of times. The construction of the luxury liner cost around $870 million. This is the most iconic ship in the world. She's the only true ocean liner. It's all about her design. You'll notice that she has a very long, and fine-lined bow. She also has a deep draft. Most ships have around about seven and a half to eight meters, whereas we are 10.3 meters, making us deeper and heavier. And she's also very long, 345 meters in overall length. And all of these factors go together to make her a true Atlantic liner. The transatlantic journey begins in Hamburg, en route to New York. The Hanseatic city knows Queen Mary too well and greets her like an old friend. Hello. Good evening. How are you this evening? I'm fine. OK. The golden age of ocean travel. On board the Queen Mary II, you can still experience it today. Welcome on board. Welcome, madam. Good afternoon, madam. Welcome on board. This is uh, very gewaltig. It's colossal and generously designed. Very impressive. This is beeindruckend. The clientele on board is solvent and sometimes extravagant. The British ocean giant offers only 1,310 cabins. That's half as many as other ships her size. She can offer her passengers the most luxurious stay on the high seas. One feels a definite sense of spaciousness. One is never overwhelmed by throngs of crowds. Other cruise liners may be just as big, but simply have an extra 2,000 guests. And I think this is something that is just generally very noticeable. Cabin prices vary from just under 1,500 to 20,000 euros per week. The nine-day Atlantic crossing first stops in the ship's home port of Southampton before heading off to New York. The daily routine is in full swing on board the Queen Mary II, even for some special little passengers. 
This ship is a pet owner's dream, where four-legged family members even have their own hotel. Coco's and Ming's parents are especially proud of their little darlings. These are Maltese, and they come out of Florida, and they just, just love it, they, don't you, huh? Owners can visit their pets during three separate visiting hours. For now, I have 11 dogs and one cat, and this cat has 12 crossing already. A cat in a dog hotel? How is that working out? She lost a lot of weight the first trip. But now, the 12th trip, she you know, eats as soon as we get her here, and, and she's really pretty calm. And she's already mocked the whole room, so she knows it's hers. <laughs> it's interesting to spend your luxury cruise in a uh, what, 12 by 20 room with no windows. <laughs> Arrival in Southampton. This quaint city on the southernmost tip of England is the home port of the Queen Mary II. The ship is emptied from the last journey. The crew fills up on water, as well as fuel and all the supplies needed for the journey across the Atlantic. New passengers embark here too, and with them, literally tons of luggage. Even dogs have a class system all their own. While the fashionable dogs stay on board, the working class police dogs are in the middle of an investigation. Every item brought on board is checked by customs officers and port police. We're trained dogs, of course, for the back of search as well, and that is to do with the crew taking cigarettes off. OK? And occasionally, um, if search on, um, on refits, we search the whole ship. There's been a delay since the morning waiting for late supplies. It puts the team under immense time pressure. Almost three hours of loading time are lost. They're still waiting for 25% of their groceries to arrive. Everything has to be done um, as a continuous operation. Otherwise, the ship will never leave on time. Right, so we have to keep going. The guests on board have high expectations. But with 20 years' experience in the field, the chef remains cool-headed. Now he must use all his senses to categorize the fruit shipment according to the level of ripeness. He gives instructions to his sous chef. It's OK, but give him another two days. The crew knows their boss and what he expects of them. Very, very precise. He wants everything in order, high quality, because, uh, you know, we're on the ship now. We keep sailing for seven days. At Southampton Port, police find neither explosives nor drugs. Now the 2,400 guests on board the gigantic Queen Mary II can enjoy the transatlantic passage. Nine massive kitchens take good care of the guests on board the Queen Mary II with delicious Star Chef quality fare. 145 cooks make it possible. The great gala dinner is about to be served. The final preparations are made. The kitchen has to serve 1,200 guests per main meal. We start at 6. That's when the guests arrive, and by 7, we've served the last course. And then there's time for dessert, coffee, and cake. After that, the waiters are setting the tables for the second main meal. That means setting up for 1,200 guests again. One specialty of the ship is its hand-carved ice sculptures. What time are you ready, approximately? Uh, maybe I'll take the minutes. 25 minutes? OK, I'll see you back at 25 minutes. The master sculptor's craft is a family tradition. The job of the people in my town is a wood carver. Almost, uh, almost my father and then my father of my father is a wood carver. In the 18th century, the Tsar commissioned ice sculptures for his palaces. On board the Queen Mary II, this eagle could have stood among them. Meanwhile, a thousand kilometers away from any shore, somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic, on one of the most luxurious cruise ships the world has to offer. Welcome to the largest casino on the seven seas. The dealers at the table are very professional 
as they exercise their art at lightning speed. From time to time, we get gamblers who are ready to play big stakes. You can recognize them immediately. They are coming straight to the table. They don't ask any questions. They just start, come to play. Even if it isn't Las Vegas, large sums are changing hands. We can talk about 10,000. Passengers from 49 nations are enjoying the cruise, all according to their own wishes. One can get used to living on the luxury liner, but time flies when you're having fun. To help it stay that way, exercise is part of the daily routine on the ship. There are 40 courses available at the virtual golf course. Today, we're in Hawaii. If you need help, a personal trainer is right there to assist you. Good vibes belong to the exercise program. Good girl, and it's on the fairway. Well done. We have a lot of fun. There's never arguments, there's always good laughter, and 40 different nationalities from around the world meeting on board the Queen Mary too. Can you imagine if the world could get along like everyone did on here? It would be amazing. And while some are enjoying virtual Hawaii, Others are dancing in the Seven Seas' largest dance hall. Queen Mary II offers an opulent array of entertainment choices. There are even dance partners for those who are traveling alone, all included in the luxury liner service program. We have to make sure that all the ladies will be done. The average age of the wealthy passengers aboard is over 60, but they seem to have energy and know how to have fun. I love dancing. I mean, I really love that. If it were not for dancing, you wouldn't see me on the street. Before boarding the Queen Mary, the dance hosts have to audition for the position. They are judged by a jury and chosen. If there's a married couple or a close partners, then um, we ask permission from the man. Um, or sometimes I say, please take my wife. Or... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people say that well-off single ladies go on the expensive voyage because of the dance hosts. But there's no hanky-panky going on around here. We can meet them like lunch or, you know, just socialize, but we don't sleep with them if that's what you're doing. <laughs> we don't. The, the, when we are caught or when we go to their cabin, if the crew saw us, the next port, they will throw us out of the ship. The dance hosts are true gentlemen, very good dancers, and often good listeners too. It's all part of the job description. I mean, I've danced with ladies, they've been, they're totally on their own, and they're not really worried about dancing anything with you. They're just telling you the whole day what they've been doing because they're on their own, they haven't had anyone to talk to, so um, they enjoy the conversation that we have as well. It's up to the imagination whether it's true or not. Whoever it was that left $650 wrapped in an elastic band in the Royal Court Theatre at the 10.30 show last night, would you please come down to the purser's desk? I'm delighted to advise you that I have found your elastic band. <laughs> the Queen Mary II even has her own TV station and her own stars. He's a very, very talented magician, and I'm um, delighted to have him on board Queen Mary II, and he is Brett Sherwood. Showmaster Leo knows his audience. If you're working in a theatre ashore, you go out on stage, your audience is over there, you do whatever you do. Here, you have breakfast with your audience, you speak to your audience, your audience tells you what they think, for good or bad. <laughs> but that's, that's the thing about working on a ship, is that so you, you, you are surrounded by your audience. The morning show has become so successful that Leo has acquired some groupies. So people have a misconception. When they think of old people, they have the wrong idea. If you look at people who are in their 70s now, they were listening to the Beatles, the Who, Rolling Stones. And uh, I think that uh, 70 is the new 40. <laughs> Still five days to go before arriving in New York. 
the Queen of the Seven Seas is traveling along the route once taken by the European explorers of the New World. Man's best friend. On board the Queen Mary II, dogs are treated like superstars. Actually, I am a very dog lover. I used to work as in my friend's pet house in my country. Then I used to apply with my executive housekeeper here, then they, they approved me, so yeah, they love me to work here. At first, the four-legged guests have problems doing their business. Max, come on, party time. A grass carpet is there to make it more natural for them. Adjustment period is the first and second day, and they don't know how where to poop, where to weep, because she's in their house. Uh, but in the third day, second day, they get used to it. Yeah. So we do this during emergency, after the crew alert signal. Of course, the crew would save man's best friend in case of a disaster. But Andre, the dog, doesn't understand what all the fuss is about. The English Bulldog has had enough for today. Seems the lifting was a bit too much. Day six of the Atlantic crossing, not far from the place where the world's most famous cruise ship disaster took place in freezing waters. On board the Queen Mary II, passengers get a sense of the dimensions of the RMS Titanic. From this vantage point, it's easy to imagine being on that fated ship. In life, people are always on their phone or on their computer, and, and to have, a, to have a, a town, as I say, without all those things is, is, is wonderful in itself, because obviously we've moved so far into technology that like being here where that's, that still doesn't exist, it's not able to exist because the satellites or whatever, I don't know why. Um, but, <laughs> you think um, they'd work it out by yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's kind of good they haven't. It's the flag on the aft deck is flying in commemoration of the event. Then the ocean giant moves on towards its destination, New York. On board the Queen Mary II, everyone's in a great mood. For those who just want to relax, the spa is waiting. If this massage table could speak, it would boast of all the celebrities who had relaxed there. My personal favorite has got to be the aquatherapy pool because it's just absolute indulgence, it's so relaxing. And if you have any concerns, or if you just want a simple area to get away from the hustle and bustle of the rest of the ship, that's the sanctuary to fall into. If some find that too wet, there are lots of other alternatives. Night is falling on this monarch of the seven seas. The British luxury liner's opulent evening program is just beginning. It all starts in the Royal Theater space. Actors on stage dazzle the audience with a performance of Sinbad. It's wonderful to be in a theater performing in front of 1,200 people. If you were to do that in London, that would be on the West End stage, you know? But you're given this opportunity is wonderful. But saying that, the, 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 the actual clientele are different because they're not a theatre-going audience. Some people sleep, some people uh, walk out in the middle of your performance. And for, for, for a theatre-going audience, you've paid the ticket. Most people just sit and they stay, you know? Unless they hate it so much they want to leave. But generally, there's a sort of like, do 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 I've got bingo to go to, so I'm going to go, you know? Um, and so that, that does happen. And that can be, that's quite a weird experience for an actor. After the play is over, another kind of theatre is taking place in the gigantic kitchen. Back to the belly of the ocean liner. 1,200 meals need to be served within a few minutes. 70 waiters and hundreds in the kitchen move together like clockwork. One can imagine when 70 waiters yell out their orders and the cooks scream out from the other end. We try, of course, to give the orders as quickly and succinctly as possible. Then we continue serving. There's tension in the air. Head chef Klaus Kremer is in control. You gain respect by mastering something, like cooking. I'm cooking and plating the food as well. This way, the waiters know that the boss can see everything going on. For the last evening on board, a luxury class gala dinner. Almost 4,000 people have to be fed. The waiters meet to discuss strategy. So make sure that you have spoken to every guest Dinners go on time, we serve on time, and we have them all happy leaving the restaurant. The rest, 
Have a nice evening. All food here is included in the price, but drinks have to be paid for. About 40% of the main courses are prepared minutes before being served. It's Klaus Kramer's kitchen trademark. I know how many nationalities are on board and how many guests are from each nation. Like this evening, I know that we have 400 Germans on board and they like to eat lobster. If they had it their way, the lobsters had two tails each. The English and Americans on board don't hold back when it comes to special requests. Especially strong is the need for five full meals a day. Make sure you're putting rice on there. 12 o'clock. The kitchen crew takes it all in stride. The first priority is that the 1,600 employees make the 2,400 guests happy around the clock. Just a few years ago, a large part of the trash produced on ships was sunk in the ocean. Today, there are very strict regulations in place. Queen Mary 2's own recycling plant is in full gear. On average, we get almost one ton of glass a day. And in volume, we'll get maybe four cubic meters of paper and domestic waste every day. The 4,000 people on board produce tons of garbage every minute. We get a ton of food every day, goes through a macerator, it ends up as fish food, and it's uh, pulled down into a thick liquid form, and then from that, it's discharged at sea in permitted areas but we'll always be a minimum of 12 miles from land and always doing greater than six knots of speed just to dissipate the food as we discharge it. So we'll have the big fish following us, the big fat healthy ones, eating all the good food. Recycling takes place 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's only a few hours now before the ship docks in New York City. It's traveled almost 3,000 nautical miles within the last seven days. To celebrate the arrival, there is an illustrious group gathered in the big ballroom. Among the guests are the ship's own cavaliers for single women. Their job is leading the ladies on the dance floor. Sometimes they're very uh, anxious about coming out the first time and they, for instance, it might be a fox rod and they want to know what dance it is. Now, if I say foxtrot, they say no. If I say quick step, they say no. So I tell them, this is moving to the music with Dennis, and I'm Dennis, <laughs> so let's dance. <laughs> and they come, and they have fun. There's ladies here who've been principals of colleges, uh, had high position jobs, or their husbands have been, had high position jobs when they were alive. Well, I, I make friends, and I smile, and just encourage them to enjoy themselves. and. Uh, um, that's what it is, really, and once you've got friends, and up they come, they love dancing, and that's it. Just as the gala reaches its high point, a quiet murmur begins throughout the room. Land has been sighted on deck. Docking in New York City, the mega metropolis on the east coast of the United States. Today, it's still the destination of immigrants, dreamers, and world citizens. In the Upper Bay, New York City's natural harbor, the Hudson River and the Atlantic flow together and offer a monumental view of the heart of New York, the island of Manhattan. This is the final stop in the journey crossing the Atlantic on one of the most luxurious cruise ships of our time. This was the most fantastic arrival ever. This view of New York is something completely unprecedented for me and something that no flight in the world could deliver. Simply fantastic. Time to disembark and greet the world-renowned city. For some of the passengers, it fulfills a lifelong, almost unattainable dream. I've been dreaming about this my whole life long, and now it's happened. That's the exact place where the settlers landed. Very impressive. 
I've seen it all on postcards, but now I'm actually here. Beautiful, wonderful, insane. Crossing the Atlantic brings to mind images for many. On board the Queen Mary 2, they all become reality.